Hello, Zero here, and welcome to um kind of short let's play series. Hopefully short. So I need to practice my voice. I haven't been speaking that much in front of a microphone for quite some time. I haven't been streaming lately, so I decided I'm just going to try to make a short dish let's play this time around right for this series we are going to be playing bitburner bitburner is a free to play incremental hacking rpg so it's it's free to play you can find it on steam you can find it on github so it's basically as an incremental game it's basically cookie clicker uh it's yeah incremental game line goes up number goes up and also a mix of some hacking games like most specifically hacknet would probably be the biggest influence but there are other influences in the cyberpunk genre like i don't know uplink deus ex and so on anyway so basically you're a hacker um we're just going to go through the tutorial so you can follow along and let's start a new game right i'm just going to take a quick peek at okay it's readable and yeah, i've zoomed in enough at 720p so let's proceed welcome to bitburner a cyberpunk themed incremental rpg the game takes place in a dark dystopian future the year is 2077 this tutorial will show you the basics of the game you may skip the tutorial at any time you can also collapse this panel to temporarily hide this tutorial so yeah uh next the tutorial will adjust to your programming ability bitburner has two types of scripts ns1 which is javascript from 2009 and before which is very simple recommended for beginners to programming or old school web developers ns2 native modern javascript Recommended if you know any programming language or are serious about learning programming. Both are available at all times and interchangeably. This choice is only for the tutorial. So yeah, uh, this is a big chunk of the game. Can be played like a cookie clicker type, but if you really want to go deep, you will have to go do a lot of programming anyway so i'll be using ns2 i'll talk about how much programming i'm going to shove into this let's play and uh, yeah i'll talk that about that later all right let's start by heading to the stats page click stats on the main navigation menu left hand side of the screen so it's highlighted in red stats shows a lot of important information about your progress such as your skills money and bonuses so let's just collapse that we are currently in sector 12 our money is starting just a thousand dollars don't have any servers owned no nodes no augs our skills are all at level one um multipliers they're essentially we're in the vanilla game no scenario yet all right let's head to your computer terminal by clicking terminal on the main navigation menu all right this is the terminal this is where most of the game well not really most of the game but it's used to interface with your home computer as well as all of the other machines around the world. Let's try it out. Start by entering help. 
Don't forget to press enter after typing the command as usual with uh, new games. So help displays a list of all available terminal commands, how to use them, and a description of what they do. Let's try another command. Alright, I'm just going to pause here because my audio kind of borked. Alright, so I don't know what happened. Maybe my, my headphones just whacked out. Anyway. Again, displays a list of all available terminal commands, how to use them, and a description of what they do. That's help. So, yeah, it just displays all of this. What you can do, it's going, the tutorial is going to explain a bit about what those things are. Let's try another command enter ls, so the next list directory. That's ls displays all files on the machine. Right, ls is a basic command that shows files on the computer. Right now it shows that you have a program called nuke on your computer. We'll get to what this does later. Using your home computer's terminal, you can connect to other machines throughout the world. Let's do that now by first entering scan. Right, scan shows all the available network connections so these are the servers connected in other words it plays a list of all servers that can be connected from your current machine a server is identified by its host name that's great and all but there's so many servers which one should you go to scan analyze gives some more some more detailed information about the servers on the network try it now so what did they didn't mention is this is sort of an emulated bash terminal so i will be just tabbing through stuff to autocomplete certain things so we can quickly go through whatever we need to do right scan analyze shows more detailed information about each server that you can connect to servers that are a distance of one node away it's possible to run a scan analyze with a higher depth uh, let's try adapt of 2 with the following command. Alright, before we do that, let's take a look at all of our connected servers to our home computer. We got noodles, don't have root access, required hacking skill is 1, number of open ports required to nuke, 0, and they have 4 gigs of RAM. Okay, so yeah, let's go scan analyze 2. Right, now you can see an information about all servers that are up to two nodes away. So it's now a tree view. So if you connect to noodles, you can go through Max Hardware. As well as figure out how to navigate to those servers through the network. network. You can only connect to a server that is one node away. To connect to a machine, use connect hostname from the results of Scanalyze 2. Um, yeah, connect host name. From the results of Scanalyze 2, we can see that Noodles is only one node away. So that's Noodles. Let's connect it now by using connect Noodles. You're now connected to another machine. What can you do now? You can hack it. In the year 2077, currency has become digital and decentralized. People and corporations store their money on servers and computers. Using your hacking abilities, you can hack servers to steal money and gain experience. Before you try to hack a server, you should run diagnostics using Analyze. When Analyze finishes running, it will show useful information about hacking the server. So. It's a noodle bar and so on and so forth. Quiet hacking skill is only one, which means you can hack it right now. Um, however, uh, in order to hack a server, you must first gain root access. The nuke.exe program that we saw earlier on your home computer is a virus that will grant you root access to a machine if there are enough open ports. Analyze shows that you don't need to open any ports. Okay, so yeah. So it's 
basically open and can be nuked. So we can just run nuke.exe. Nuke successful. So gained root access to noodles. You can now run scripts on the server. Now have root access. You can hack the server using hack. Try doing that now. Right, it's hacking. You're now attempting to hack the server. Performing a hack takes time and only has a certain percentage chance of success. This time and success chance is determined by a variety of factors, including your hacking skill and the server's security level. So we failed to hack the server, but we gained 0.825 hacking speed. In your attempt to hack, if your attempt to hack the server is successful, you will steal a certain percentage of the server's total money. This percentage is affected by your hacking skill and the server's security level. The amount of money on a server is not limitless, so if you constantly hack a server and deplete its money, you then you will encounter diminishing returns in your hacking. You will need to use Grow, which tricks the company into adding money into their server, and Weaken, which increases the speed of hack and grow. So we have Hack, which reduces the amount of money in the server. I think... Uh, yeah, there's 7,000, 7k money in the server and security level is 1. Our chance to hack is only 42% and so on. I'm not sure... Yeah, we can type the stuff here and just see what happens. Alright, money grown by 1,000%. 1274% gained 3 XP and the security increased to 1.1. That's just, no, uh, you can't analyze it. But we can weaken it to see how much a single weaken command can reduce the security. You're real roading us, you can't analyze it. But that should show that this money increased by a thousand percent. Anyway, so it seems that the weekend reduces the security level by 0 0.5. And the grow increases it by somehow one. Not sure if that's... Well, we'll, we'll get to that later. Right, uh, from any server, you can go back home using home. Let's head home before creating our first script. So that's essentially CD home or... There's no CD here, there's connect and there's home. So home. Hacking is the core mechanic of the game and it's necessary for progressing. However, you don't want to be hacking manually the entire time can automate, automate your hacking by writing scripts. Create a new script or edit edit an existing one. You can use nano. Scripts must end with the JS extension. Let's make a script now by entering nano noodles.js. Uh, Somehow you can go through this while the hacking is in progress, but uh, sure, let's just nano. Right, this is script editor. You can use it to program your scripts. Copy and paste the following code into the script editor. All right. For anyone with basic programming experience, this code should be straightforward. This script will continuously hack the noodle server. So this is our first <laughs> glimpse of net script NS2. So it's essentially ECMAScript 6 plus, essentially TypeScript. Uh, I, I'm really hesitant to call it JavaScript, but for this run, I'm going to name the scripts as .js just for in case people watch the middle and wonder why I'm using .ns. So it should be clear that I am coding 
a dialect of JavaScript here. Anyway, again, for anyone who knows programming, it's just while this is true, then it's going to hack noodles, but it's going to wait for noodles to work. So there's the async await for. Uh, anyway, uh, let's not talk about that. But just point out certain commands need to be waiting. Yeah, you need to use await so the, the game can run it in the background. If you don't do that, it's just going to, without await, it's going to send an infinite loop and it's essentially going to just break the game. Anyway, so yeah, let's just save this. Control S. Uh, now we'll run the script. Scripts require a certain amount of RAM to run and can be run on any machine which you have root access to. Different servers have different amounts of RAM. You can also purchase more RAM for your home server. Check how much RAM is available on this machine. Enter free. So this is one thing about the tutorial. It expects you to be in the noodles. I'm not sure if I am allowed to go to the noodles, but we'll just follow the tutorial as though it it's okay if you do this at home. Oh, we have four gigs of free RAM. No, we don't have four gigs of free RAM. All right, I'm just going to copy it. I'm not sure if it's going to be allowed. Yeah, it's not allowed. All right, we'll just run it. It's not four gigs. It's, we have eight gigs here. The four gigs is as you can see in the analyze. If we ran it in noodles, you can run it. Anyway, um, yeah. Right, script is now running. It will continue to run in the background. It'll and will continue and automatically stop if the code ever completes. Uh, the noodles.js will never complete because it runs in an infinite loop. These scripts can passively earn you income and hacking experience. Your scripts will also earn money and experience while you are offline, also at a slightly slower rate. Let's check out some statistics for our running scripts by clicking active scripts. Right. This page displays information about all of your scripts that are running across every server. You can use this to gauge how well your scripts are doing. Take a look at that. Um, running one thread and can just click on the log. Oh, we were still not able to hack it. All right, uh, let's just continue. One last thing about scripts. Each active script contains logs what de that detail what it's doing. So essentially, I just skips this by showing you the log earlier. You can check these logs using the tail command. Do that now for the script we just ran by typing tail and the name of the scripts. All right. Uh, yeah. The log for the script won't show much right now. It might sh show nothing at all if you kind of screwed up. Anyway, we didn't screw up except our script is screwing up. And it's not hacking. Um, check back again in a few minutes. This is an incremental game. You will have to wait. There are ways to make things faster, but this is a waiting game. This is not like Hacknet where you're, there's a race against time. This is more chill. This covers the basics of hacking. To learn more about writing scripts, you can select tutorial in the main navigation menu to look at the documentation for now let's move on to something else hacking is not the only way to earn money one other way to passively earn money is by purchasing and upgrading hacknet nodes let's go to hacknet through the main navigation menu now here you can purchase new hacknet nodes and upgrade your existing ones let's purchase a new one now so we have a thousand bucks uh hacknet node is a thousand bucks ouch 
Uh, you just purchase a hacknet node. This hacknet node will passively earn you money over time, both on online and offline. When you get enough money, you can upgrade your newly purchased hacknet node below. So essentially, this is the cookie clicker part. <laughs> if you're really not into programming, you can theoretically use this to earn most of your money. Theoretically, I honestly doubt you would, you would be able to do it. Uh, also, I've zoomed the game enough that it's breaking the UI. So for most of the game, I will just keep this closed. All right, let's click on city. This page lists all of the different locations you currently can currently travel to. Each location has something that you can do. There's a lot of content out in the world. Make sure you explore and discover. So yeah, we're at sector 12, the first city you spawn in and there's a lot of things you can do here uh but yeah uh, just they're just gonna do that later all right this is the end of the tutorial this page contains a lot of different documentation about the game's content and mechanics i know it's a lot but i highly suggest you read or at least skim through this before you start playing that's the end of the tutorial hope you enjoy the game Right, if we click, oh, we got successful hack. So if we click getting started, it's going to open a new window. All right, let's just open that on our safe browser. But yeah, it's a getting started guide for beginners. It's essentially an expanded tutorial. I am just going to run through a bit of this. And we are going to deviate a bit. All right, getting started guide for beginner programmers. Again, uh, we're, we're going to get to that. <laughs> uh, this, isn't, this isn't optimal. The strategies isn't optimal. There's just meant to introduce you to, uh, to the game. Right, if you want to follow this, this is this is the URL bitburnerythedocs.io uh, and it should be the getting started guide. Yeah, guides and tips and getting started guide. Anyway, uh, we're not going to follow through this, but um. You can look at it at what you can do we're essentially going to go through something similar to this but i'm not going to follow it as is uh yeah all right uh back to gaming also i've opened the the basic list of functions here so i will explain it as we go along All right, back to the game. As mentioned, uh, I will close this as much as possible. All right, first things first, we need more money. Thankfully, we're getting money from noodles. Unfortunately, fortunately, this isn't that much this is actually pretty decent in terms of money 946k uh the good thing about noodles is a single grow should max it out so i'll just show this and its security level doesn't really grow that high all right it's maximum money let's see i think that's the maximum money let's grow it again as i take a sip of my water yeah that's the maximum so if i grow it that's what i'm going to get 
All right, uh, let's just kill this. I can I can use PS the usual Nick style. I can just kill one, or I can just kill this. Right. First things first, we are going to sort of follow the tutorial. So the tutorial that does this is it's going to introduce you to your first script, which is early hack template script. And the idea is it's going to automatically weaken the server until it's weak enough. If it's weak enough, it's going to first try to grow it if there's not enough money yet and otherwise just start hacking let's just do that um so instead of nano i'm going to i'm going to use vim because that's what i use for my text editing for the past i don't know 10 years 12 years in my professional programming i'm not going to start a debate why <laughs> if it's good or not i'm just what i'm used to so let's just go with early.js all right uh, let's just go to continuously And we can uh, if not weak bro if uh goes below threshold and hack. So this is essentially our basic idea for the script showed in the showed in what you call this showed in the tutorial at least the basic guide so post tutorial tutorial all right first things first uh vim i explained why i'm using it because i'm used to it secondly tabs or spaces that's a trick question it's a meme question kind of like pineapple on pizza people meme about it but people don't really think about pepperoni on pizza and uh, is it really good on pizza so seeing tabs versus bases my answer doesn't matter doesn't matter because a text editor will allow you to indent using certain commands so i'm just using the vim indent which apparently use a stab so i'm not complaining sometimes i like spaces sometimes i like tabs but the answer to tabs versus spaces is whatever your program is doing or whatever your project is doing it's all for consistency it's just a meme question don't, don't think about it if you're a beginner programmer and don't get baited into it also uh yeah i am going to be very lax in programming i'll try not to show off too much um because i well i would like to think in this game i don't like i don't want to think about things that don't really matter like style and uh, over optimizing all right uh, another thing I'm another thing I'm going to do is uh, um, I think that's that that's all I need to say about programming I'm going to be using again this is net script which is essentially a dialect of TypeScript I'm not going to be adding types to whatever custom objects I'm going to do. I'm not going to make interfaces and the like. I might consider using imports, but apart from that, I'll try to be as lax as possible to not 
scare away the non-programmers. All right, let's just do something. Uh, set our target. Cons target calls. Let's hard code it. Uh, let's hard code it for now. Then calculate thresholds. So it said weaken if not weak. Um, cons security threshold equals. Uh, let's just follow what the tutorial said. So it's just going to be ns that get server in security level. So we're going to get the minimum security of the target level uh, of the server. We try to weaken uh, the this script will try to weaken the server to as low as possible, but because if you're just going to weaken when it's already very weak, it's a waste of effort. So instead of weakening all the way to the minimum, we'll just add five. I could actually go for something lower. Well, let's just go for two. Also, grow money if money goes below threshold. Let's get the money hold equals ns that get server max money it gets the maximum money available on the server times 0 0.85 i think 75 tutorial says 75 let's go higher uh, let's just go 0 0.9 so if the money is already higher than 0.9 percent or 90 percent of the maximum money we are going to uh yeah we're going to hack if it goes below we're going to grow until it goes up the reasoning for that is hacking uh hacking hacks a percent a fixed percent based on the number of threads you're using hacks a fixed percent of the server's money so if you're hacking at 100 percent versus you're hacking at 50 percent of the money you're gonna get half the money on the ladder so ideally you want to go up but the problem is if you're going to force your way to be always at 100% some of the grow uh, some of the grow actions will be wasted because you can't go higher than 100% also there's a problem if you don't have any threshold just hack 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 and don't grow you can actually go to zero we'll try doing that just for fun later but yeah all right uh wow true now it's going to complain because we don't have any awaits yeah possible infinite loop we need an await so all right uh let's go for an await if an s serve get server security level is um if it's greater than security threshold wait an s dot weaken else um if money goes below threshold ns that get server available money available i get is less than money threshold
else? Pack it. Hmm. Pro target. And await NS that hack target. Oh, it should be else if. Right? This is essentially the tutorial. <laughs> what the the post tutorial tutorial wants you to do. Right, save that. And uh, yes, we haven't done that. Um, let's just run it. Let's copy it to noodles. All right. And PS. Tail 2. Right, it's hacking because the security level is. Um, yeah, it's less than. So 1 plus 5, that should be 6. I think for noodles, it's the maximum security is 2, so we're never going to be weakening it. Weakening it. It's always going to be hack and grow. All right, uh, before we continue, I just remembered. So for the settings, I am I, I could change the theme to something more viewable, but say default light. Um, but for the sake of this game, I for this playthrough and no one's complaining yet. I'm just going to stick with the default. For programmers, they might want the monokai just just because they're more comfortable with it. Or, or gamers just gonna use the Discord. Anyway, failed to hack. Uh, no. All right, so uh, that's just one server. We can do this on all of the other servers. And you can just go to all of the servers and uh, start doing the same. Copy paste early, replace the name, and so on. Um, that's not programmer friendly. That first off, let's just try it on our uh, on our local, so so we can earn a bit of money, right? So. First, let's check how much memory requires. It requires 2.4 gigs of RAM. So we've got 8 gigs divided by 2.4. That's 3, right? So we can run early and using the dash T to set the number of threads. It tells it to run 3 threads. This threading is kind of weird. It's not really how threading works in the real life, but essentially it's just a multiplier. So it essentially multiplies the weekend. So once it goes here and weakens it, it's going to be essentially three weekends happening at the same time. Same thing with the grow, three grows at the same time or hack, three hacks at the same time. So tail that speed is three, right? Let's see how the hack will work. Right, so normally we hack for 7k, but with this hack, we hack 21k. So that's basically the threading. It's it's kind of not how threading works in real life, but maybe that's how things work in 2077. All right, doing all that manually. So I'm 
Uh, scan, analyze. Can go to food and stuff. And then I'm gonna copy it. The thing is 16, so it can run six threads of that. That's kinda annoying. Alright, let's just make a script that just does that. So it's going to first. Alright. Say attack.js. Alright, that version one, the JS. Alright. Find all servers. Uh get servers we can nuke nuke them then for for every server all right now let's just now let's just put it here and for every server nuke them Copy over early .js. Then run max threads of early .js. So we're essentially just attacking food and stuff. We're going to hack every server that we can hack. And uh, yeah. I'm going to earn money from... From... Money and experience. Mostly experience. We really want the experience. Because things are unlocked. Because of experience. We can start creating programs once we hit 25 and brute SSH. Which is needed in order to break the next level of servers. Alright. I closed it because... As far as I know, if I change the tab, it's going to go back to Nano. There's no setting to change, so we're going to be defaulting to Vim. Alright. I'm gonna kind of flex here. Uh, I'm going to start our first programming lesson. I'm gonna find all servers using red first search. Alright, that servers equals uh yeah. Oh Red first search. Uh I'm probably not going to uh, I can I think I can open a brave to that. Alright, bread first search. So we're going to start from the top and the top because our servers in Bitburner is a tree. It's not uh it's not the looping graph. And even if it's a looping graph, I can search through everything. So what I'm going to do is start from the top, then I'm going to search all of the next, then add it to our list, then the newly added, I'm going to search them and add them to the list. They're connected to the list. And C, add them to the list. Then A, add them to the list. Nothing. Add them to the list. And nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Alright, I could copy this, but eh, <laughs> I, I don't think I need to. This is a very, very basic. All right. Uh, four, let I equal zero. I less than servers. I plus plus. Um, let new servers equals ns that scan servers so it scans hmm. a list of servers connected to the server all right we're just going to remove home because we're not going to hack that we're going to remove that after 
to redo it or alternatively i can just start here uh yeah, so this is gone so it's just going to get everything then for every server we're going to rescan again then for yeah. um servers if if the new server isn't the list the thing about all right let's just save this if i scan noodles it's going to show home again same thing with max hardware if i scan i'm going to show noodles again so i'm i have to check if uh servers includes new server not includes you can now add push um push new server then all right uh let's just sh let's just show the progress Hmm, before every iteration or after every iteration? Let's just go with after iteration and before the first iteration. Let's see if we have an error. No, we don't have any RAM. Because <laughs> we, we did a bunch of funny stuff. Alright, let's just kill... Kill the script you're running here. Host name should be a string? Yep. Well, we can have uh, NS print. Not going to do any fancy string interpolation. This should be fine. Uh, it's not running. But can see the recently killed. And now we see all of the servers. So return three connections from Omnitech. And that's all of the servers. So noodles, food and stuff, Sigma Cosmetics, Joe's Guns, Hong Fang Tea, and so on. But again, what we wanted. is let's just use this let's get all of the servers that we can nuke um const of uh, zero servers equals all right Ugh. modern javascript not really modern this is around five years old already we're going to use some of the newer javascripts so if you're pretty new to java uh, where you've been an old school javascript uh user or haven't been using it for long you might this might look weird but yeah i'm just going to use filter All right, uh, pro tip, if you're going to be looking for JavaScript docs, just use MDN. If you're going to be searching JavaScript any other way, you might not get a good result. You might find something that is only higher in the search results because of SEO. All right, uh, anyway, 
filter uh, creates a shallow copy of the given array filter down to the elements from the given array that pass the test implemented in the function so servers dot filter uh, let's just use s and s uh, ns that get server ports required s zero ns dot print let's just show it yep we see all of the level zero servers that's noodles with and stuff and so on now for every server and remove this this is self self-documenting of uh, levels constants I always keep forgetting that because I'm used to other languages that don't need to declare server all right um ns.nuke server copy over ns.scp uh chs server let's just use the uh, and let's just not use hard-coded values SAP server yes we're just gonna copy over that then run max threads uh, equals let's just do this here uh, and it's that scripts get script ram so we can know how much RAM that requires. NS that gets server max RAM. Server. Divided by what? M required. Also, need to go for math.lore to round it down. So many threads to parse, and all right, we forgot the end of week. Does nuke require a promise? Nuke is not a promise. SCP is a promise. Nuke is void, all right? Uh, NS. No, NS is exact. It's not a promise. Um, the attack scripts, run it on the server, and the number of threads would be threads. And that's our early attack scripts. We are just going to be hammering. <laughs> We are going to be hammering Call this noodles All right, and that's that Started off with noodles already JS is already in noodles uh, Food and stuff run it with six threads because it's 16 gigs Sigma cosmetics 16 gigs 16 gigs six threads again and Let's see our active scripts. And that's that. Everyone is attacking it right now. Um, yeah. So that's our first version. We are 
earning a bit and we're starting to get more stuff but noodles might not be the best uh yeah it might not be the best in terms of money right let's let's copy paste some stuff i'm not going to export it uh, it's it's good to export what we did this can thing but i'll leave that in a future episode so instead i will just copy paste this and uh, create a new file uh my servers so for here we are going to list down more details about the servers our analyze is decent so scan analyze it's decent but it doesn't give us certain things doesn't give us the maximum um to call this it doesn't give us the maximum security level maximum money well that's our main concern right now we need to know how much money we're going to earn from something and also we might need to know some other things and what are those other things uh, server oh, right again const server of level zero servers let's see uh const let's just print it and as the print let's go for t print so we can just print on the terminal don't need to open it again all right printf uh we're gonna use printf instead of string interpolation because i just feel like doing it feels like c right server first would be server um let's go with the print f so server money would be percent s two percent s uh, let's go with uh yeah let's just I, I'm, I'm i'm going to clean it up later it's just going to be confusing if we just do too much right ns dot get server money available so it's current money okay our hack level has already gone over 25 uh, we're we're starting to get the story the game the main campaign message received from an un from unknown sender i know you can sense it i know you're searching for it that's why you spend night after night at your computer it's real. I've seen it. And I can help you find it. But not right now. You're not ready yet. Use this program to track your pro progress. The flight.exe program was added to your home computer. And the message came from... Well, was signed. Jumper. This message was saved as J0 message onto your home computer. Um, let's just do that. Uh, we're just going to open this again later. So, if you want to see that message again, that's that the early message. It's a beginner's guide to hacking, which is essentially what I explained to you. Uh, we're going to go through this later, but right now. We we're just going to go through whatever. So they said we have flight. Let's see what flight is. 
So, our next goal to open the the story is to reach a hundred billion dollars. We are right now at one million. This is an this is an incremental game. We can wait a thousand times for this and raise our hacking skill to 250 and also install 30 augs i'll explain augs later once we get there all right let's go to analyze servers again need to know how much money is in the server server max money and maybe ns dot ns dot get gross and yeah, get server growth how much money we're going to get And that's string, but it can be. Alright. Post name should be a string again. Uh string F. Noodles, only 1 million. Food and stuff, 20 million. Sigma Cosmetics, 22. No, it's not. It's just only 2 million. At least right now. But the maximum is 50 million, 57. Alright, that's kind of annoying. We can't really read it, so... Uh, let's, 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 let's do something fun. Let's turn it to a fancy. And format. It uses the format? Uh, there's a library. The game's using a format library. I, I, I can't seem to remember the name right now. All right. So format the number. And let's just turn it. To dollars and zero comma zero. So that shows it into something more readable. And the other one. Just finish copying this before I read it. All right. Message again from Jumper. Soon you will be contacted by a hacking group known as Nightsick. They can help you with your search. You should join them, garner their favor, and exploit them for their augmentations. But do not trust them. They are not what they seem. No one is. So, yeah, what I said earlier about the next step being this, there are some steps before we can get there. It's, it's, it's not that, it's not that, um, it's not that brutal. Alright, 50, 50 million, Harakiri Sushi is um, probably our next target. Unfortunately, at this point, Harakiri Sushi is one of the harder servers to get. So, if you look at the tutorial, post tutorial tutorial, they want you to go for Joe's guns. Let's see why. Copy this. So, 
so it's not dollar reduce. Um, I don't think I need the end format here. I don't think I need the end format. Uh, get server security level. Get server max. Uh, right, that sh should be enough. Right, Harakiri Sushi is fifteen security level. Um, this fort is not security level; it's more of the growth. So it grows faster so ideally um might <laughs> sarakiri sushi might actually be better to hack unfortunately sarakiri sushi is uh, only available once you hit 40 but thankfully we're at 40 so um okay i guess first things first let's just run this auto link so yeah let's explain this first uh, i don't think i need to show that again this play page displays any programs that you're able to create writing the code for a program takes time which can vary based on how complex the program is if you're working on creating a program you can cancel at any time your progress will be saved and you can continue later so currently we are creating auto link if you can just leave the coding autolink.exe here or any create program. It's going to run faster. Uh, if you do something else, it's going to run, but it's not going to be run, run as fast as if you focus on it. Right. So next step would be brute SSH because that's, that's how we break open the level one servers. So we already saw our target, Harakiri Sushi. Let's CP attack VS and we are going to change it to attack to the JS. Right, as mentioned by Jumper, someone's going to contact us, and this seems to be that... that thing. Message received from an unknown sender. We've been watching you, your skills are very impressive, but you're wasting your talents. If you join us, you can put your skills to good use and change the world for the better. If you join us, you can unlock your full potential. But first, you must pass our test find and install the back door on our server cybersec so we need to find and install a back door on our server hmm where can they be all right let's just do this first oh let's search what can be be oh it's csec we need to hack csec and install a back there to them but at this point, no, we're not going to do that. Let's just continue what we're doing. All right, attack V2 is we're going to get an attacker, but we are going to be using a different script. And that script allows us to set a target. So const target equals and s the args arg zero so we can set the target and this early I'm going to make early version two now this early version two now accepts arguments also for that before we run our max threads let's kill all Uh, 
um, NS that kill all server. And as uh, just for safety, um, for safety. Wait a second. Or the script die. Now instead of that, we can also get the target so that's our attack v2 cp attack uh, early in the chance so our target now would not be noodles it would now be an argument Let's see how this works. So first things first, I'm going to just try to attack Harakiri Sushi, but again, our hacking skill is required pretty high. I might just go with Ghost Guns. Ghost Guns. At least so we can earn some stuff. Right. B2. All right, everyone is now hacking Joe's guns. Let's just see that what happened there. Oh, that's early. Again, I uh, already have root access. Copied an early V2, killing all scripts. May take a few minutes for the scripts to die. Just waited a second. <laughs> All right, that does that, and now we are weakening. Execute, execute Joe's guns in two minutes. So that's a problem with the if you haven't weakened it yet. Uh. Noodles is right now at 2.9, 19, but Joe's guns is S15. It's kinda high, so the everything takes longer, much longer. Uh, what we can do while we're waiting is take a look at the city. So things that we can do in the city first off we can go to the university and get some hacking experience for free but unfortunately we are creating a program instead we're just going to go to a computer store and start downloading some ram so certain places uh have job openings alpha enterprises has some job openings so yeah uh also you can purchase servers we are going to start purchasing servers later so that it's it's uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to be talking about it this episode but maybe uh maybe in 30 minutes next is tor router i'm not going to talk about tor router this is kind of cheap uh, we're going to skip that for now. More RAM means more scripts at home. I will need to... Uh, our ideal uh, approach should be to upgrade our RAM as much as possible. So we got 16. Okay. 16 RAM. We can now actually run some some stuff for um they call this for joe's guns so we can run some basic scripts on our local uh we have free free ram 
so might as well create an uh a new script just for weakening we want to run weekend before we do everything else uh server uh, uh joe's guns is now at 13. even with all the servers hammering them it still is just uh 13.14 13.14 13.15 uh, 13 so as we uh recall each weekend only reduces the security level by 0.5 0 0.05 and unfortunately in javascript uh floating point numbers are weird <laughs> all right so what i'm going to do is uh let's see weekend so continuous weekend the js so it's just going to be well true don't need to worry about this doing it over and over there's no problem if we continuously weaken something it might waste a couple of cycles but lady we still earn xp whenever we weaken and it's uh the only problem is it's slow so you can just hack instead but point is if we're just going to weaken something this script should be enough and we're going to use this script the entire game it only requires 1.75 gigs of ram so 16 gigs divided by uh 1.75 i think it's uh still nine right run eight or nine uh joe's guns t nine yep so tail you can use i'm using pids because that's what i'm used to but if there's only one uh it can tail if there's only one running you can just use the tail on one all right that's one of the things that we can do is uh just continue waiting wait until this finish but we really don't need uh this can help but personally uh it's all it's mainly for beginners it's going to it's really helpful for you the first few hours in the game actually first 50 hours in the game is really helpful auto link it allows you to click on the servers instead of using to connect so so scan analyze 3 just click silver helix and you're there same thing if you want to go to csec and just click csec and that's essentially what we're going to do once this finishes all right what else can we do uh the tutorial tells you to start buying servers but 8 gig servers really isn't much you want a beefier server i would prefer you wait until you get at least uh 256 gigs of ram that's that's the absolute lowest that you're going to buy but i would prefer uh, you buy a terabyte of ram for your uh, initial servers and unfortunately as you can see here you can order bigger servers by scripts we don't take custom orders in person so you're going to need a script to buy it so we don't know the price but i think it's linear it looks like it's linear so 55 55,000 times the gigs and it increases by powers of two but instead of just um guess guessing we can just make a price list script uh 
Uh, let I equals. Sure, let's go with zero. I less than thirty. I plus plus. Ns dot t print f uh send s g b percent s and s dot Let's add commas. Same thing. This is going to be the price. So that's auto link. Um, first, get server um, purchase server cost. Number of gigs. All right. Oh, I need to kill everything again. All right, finish creating autolink. That exe new program can be found on your home computer. You don't need to run it manually. You just you need to, you will be able to click it if you run scan analyze. So let's just go to csec see what the csec is number of close point ports for nuke is one so we need the brute ssh this program executes a brute force that attacks that opens ssh ports so we need that so we can open the ssh port so we can nuke it um just run price list so it seems that the maximum maximum cost is uh, our maximum server is 57 billion right that's a billion right uh And I don't think it's going to be 30. It's just going to be 20. All right. Just 29 billion. We need 100 billion to unlock the uh, game. So as you can see, the servers, purchase servers, are much cheaper than upgrading your home server. So 3 million for 32 gigs for three for uh for four million you can get 64 gigs so it's it it's not cheaper yet but it's going to be much cheaper thanks to how the how the formula calculates your home ram the only advantage of home ram is when you install your augments it's going to be um what do you call this it's gonna be retained you don't need to buy this again at least for the game i could buy two million could wait for 4 64 gig but eh it's really not uh, ideal yet I will wait for at least at least 512 so we can again just hammer with with weekend All right let's see our scripts Ooh, 
now we are at the group part our security is really not that weak i can still use the continuous week and see we can so we can i could try to use a continuous grow the grow is actually pretty a bit pretty slow but it's two million if, if the grows are if the grow works better sure why not Mm -hmm. uh, security is like that so i don't need c weaken i might need c grow Nine takes one minute. All right, so uh, that's going to take a while. Uh, I so at this point, you can just wait around and do some random stuff. You can actually go around the city. Ideally, we're going, we're going to go to the slums and do some stupid stuff, but this is the first episode. We're not going to do that quite yet. Mm -hmm. So, what else can we do? While we're here, let's just... Uh, while, uh, while, while we're still in the first episode, I'm just going to do some stuff with Hagnet, the cookie clicker. Let's automate cookie clicker. <laughs> and get done with it. Alright. How do we automate cookie clicker? Let's look at the API for... The Hacknet server. just looking at it uh i think we can focus first here so we can a uh, brute ssh would be able to do stuff oh basic documentation hacknet node api All right, NS that hack net. While we're waiting for this, and so that we can get it out of the way, we're just going to do the hack net. Uh... I, I don't want to use hacknet because hack is a very common thing, but sure, why not? On it, Jess. I should probably just use eight threads so we still have some RAM to run some stuff. Const. HN equals ns that hack. So this is the hacknet API. Um, core upgrade cost, ash upgrades, node stats, and so on. All right, let's just get the node stats of zero. Let's ns that. Print, uh, deep print. 
Let's see our... Is this... Has this been done? All right, let's just kill this. So we are going to have some RAM left over to run some programs. Uh, run hack. God no. ah, damn it. Of course, a lot of RAM. Right. You need to say the uh let's call this the you you'll need to add the argument so you can kill it also all right um hacknet name hacknet node one level one production 1.5 time online total production all right so that's our hacknet. Let's automate this. So we know the total production. So we can have a script that stores all of the total production for each server. Then if it reaches a certain point, we can just buy some stuff. So it automatically pays for itself. Okay. Uh... So the idea is um right every five seconds. Let's just go with every ten seconds. Or each uh, yeah. Get there to all production since last upgrade. Then fraud um, uh, greater than cost to upgrade cash buff? Is it cash? Level RAM and course, okay. Um, all right, prod plus green level. I think let's go with boars. Let's get the leeway. Also, great course. Times some point one, so you're not not emptying our money. All right, root SSH is done. Let's just wrap this up so that we can get to CSEC. Uh, So yeah, that should automatically fully upgrade our Hacknet server. And this is for every 10 seconds. Um, hn.get
Num notes. Uh, const. All right, this, this is just going to be version one. We need to rerun it every time we purchase a new server. Let's just go with num. Or const. Uh, num. Let's do. Let's just do it. Let's just do something fancy, or not. Ah. Uh, Yeah, let's just go with prod. We're, we're not going to. Not going to be fancier. I. Dot. Wait, get node stats. What does get node stats do? What? Alright, total production. Right, total production. Should be a number. It's not automatic! Automatically turn to Pim. If wait, why N is that dead node stats? Oh, so why it's not working? Yeah. I was using NS. Uh, let's also add get money.
Claro. And it's got server money available. So th this tells you how much money you have. Get server money available. Your money is stored in your home server, home computer. Updated. And it's pretty much the same. Instead of core upgrade, we're going to have mem. There's cash. No, it's Hatnet servers. There should be a RAM. RAM upgrade cost. Okay. costs it's mid level so that should be it for the hagnet at least for this point uh if i'm going to upgrade this it's going to be able to automatically detect if I purchase a new server, if it's whatever. Right, every 28 seconds, it should upgrade the course first. Mm -hmm. Probably the level first. Alright, it's upgrading the level, it's not upgrading the course though. Oh, I mean, yeah. I think there's something wrong with the logic. It has to wait before the production. No, it should be new prod. It has to wait until there's profit. Right. It should not upgrade. It's going to wait for 12 
684 divided by 12. Yep, no longer upgrading. It's going to wait for the... I might just print it. Right. Since that's upgrade, we're at thirty-nine. How much is the next upgrade? Six hundred eighty-four. Can we wait? Yeah. So we're going to see this. Uh, it's going to go down. Anyway, back to what we need to do. Can now go to CSEC. Again, to remember what we just did. So, need to hack it. Alright. This is what they want. And this is what they'll get. Back door. And 842, 135. So this is done. No need to think about that anymore. Now first received our first faction invitation. Would you like to join CyberSec? Warning! Joining this faction may prevent you from joining other factions during this run. Um, if you read through the beginner tutorial, don't need to worry about this ju just yet. Just join whatever faction you see. Alright, what are factions? This is CyberSec. The internet is the first thing that was built that we don't fully understand. The largest experiment in our anarchy that we have ever had. And as, as the world becomes increasingly dominated by it, society approaches the brink of total chaos. We serve only to protect society, to protect humanity, to protect the world from in imminent collapse. So, factions allow you to conduct work for them so you will earn reputation for your work and you know, earn some other stuff so for instance we can do this we're going to earn some hacking experience in the side in addition to the reputation that we're gonna get and if you earn enough favor which you earn by purchasing augmentations you can just pay for reputation Right, what are the augmentations available? Faction augmentations from CyberSec. These are all the augmentations that are available to purchase from CyberSec. Augmentations are powerful upgrades that will enhance your abilities. So first available is Neuroflux Governor, level one. A device that is embedded in the back of the neck, a Neuroflux Governor monitors and regulates nervous impulses coming to and from the spinal col column, essentially governing the body. By doing so, it improves the functionality of the body's nervous system. Um, yeah, it's essentially the basic brain upgrade. This special augmentation can be leveled up infinitely. Each level of this augmentation increases most multipliers by 1%, stacking multiplicatively. 
So back to our stats. Most of the stats will be upgraded with uh, by one percent. So it's the cheapest augmentation, but one of the weakest too. Next would be Bitwire, small brain implant embedded in the cerebrum. This regulates and improves the brain's computing abilities, plus 5% hacking skill. Synaptic enhancement implant, 3% hack, grow a weaken. A small cranial implant that continuously uh, uses weak electric signals to stimulate the brain and induce stronger synaptic activity. This improves the user's cognitive abilities. Uh, so cranial signal processors, Gen 1. There's Gen 2, which... So it's essentially kind of like Governor, but more hard-coded. First generation of cranial signal processors. Cranial signal processors are a set of specialized microprocessors that are attached to neurons in the brain. These chips process neural activities to quickly and automatically perform specific computations so that the brain doesn't have to. Plus 5% hacking skill and faster hack grow weaken. 1%. So same thing, just Gen 2 and much more powerful. 7% hacking skill, 2% HGUW, and 5% hack success chance. And Neurotrainer 1, a decentralized cranial implant that improves the brain of brain's ability to learn. This is installed by releasing millions of nanobots into the human brain, each of which attaches to a different neural pathway to enhance the brain's ability to retain and retrieve information. Less than XP for all skills. So this is going to take a while. So ideally, you're just going to leave that aside. So it is automatically upgraded to 14. Not bad. Alright, let's just take a look at our stuff. Uh, we're earning much, but um, they're still growing. Server money available is now 4%. I think instead of we can we should just go with grow. All right, our hack is at that. We can go for deep scan server profiler, but not yet. Oh, we I kind of remember that we got brute SSH. So what we can do is now upgrade our attack. So I don't think I'm going to upgrade. I'm I'm not going to change this to V3 just yet because it's essentially just doing the same thing. All right, instead of server one, let's go level one servers. We can still nuke them. We can't run scripts on them we can't hack them but we can run scripts on them so instead of just nuke the server we first ns that root ssh the server then we do the same so i don't think i need to do this again i don't need to upgrade this to version 3 yet They're now going Hong Fang T, Harakiri Sushi, Nectar, Net. Hmm. Hmm. We used Nectar Net yet. <laughs> so. We forgot to change this. Uh, let's run it again. Let's 
So we're now Brute SSHing C sec. We done that. Neonet done that. Zero max hardware. Iron Gym. Alright. Let's check our active scripts. Max hardware is now attacking Joe Scott. Unfortunately, we still don't have that much money. Um, Joe's Guns has 60, I think. So it might not have been a good idea to attack Joe's Guns yet. We might. We could have, or a better idea might have been to just earn maybe 14 million. And just keep attacking either food and stuff or maybe Joe's gun uh, not Joe's guns, noodles and uh yeah, food and stuff. Food and stuff is still 50 million. Fortunately the grow is slow. Twenty. At this point, it might actually make more sense to go for Harakiri Sushi. Uh, she T6. Start working on Harakiri Sushi. Four minutes. It's a long waiting time. It's not that long of a waiting time. Um, for cybersec, do we need to do this yet? But the other things, we can't really work on the FTP, the next level of servers. So like Silver Helix and the like. So, hmm, there are some some things I can do. So, first choice, I can go back and attack food and stuff instead of Joe's guns. He might earn much more money there, so we can start provisioning servers, which will then attack Joe's guns. It's because, as you can see, just 28 million or 56 million, we can get a uh, one terabyte server. And one terabyte is much more than the total of all of these servers that we found. Zero has 32 gigs. That's still, that's big, but it's not that big. So they're not starting to weaken the server. Uh, one minute. Right, that's one option. We can go for noodles and food and stuff. Another option is we can start looking for contracts. So this is a uh, sort of hidden, hid, uh, hidden feature that you will learn while you're exploring the game, but. Sure, let's just try doing that. So we can go now we have uh auto link, we can go through the servers and search what they have and quickly go to them. So for instance, we can open this. The new god. Uh if this was a lore run, I would read this, but this is not a lore run, so we're just going to look for servers. So Want new triads? Hmm. There's some interesting stuff here that maybe in a future episode I can do while we're waiting for something to finish. Uh, democracy is dead. Dot let's. Uh, let's go to Silver Helix. 
Hmm. There's Computech. Man and Machine. Democracy is dead. Oh. Alright. So, as you can see, if we go through different servers, we can look for stuff. Sometimes it's lore, sometimes it's whatever. But what I am looking for is contracts. So let's look for contracts. Let's just start closing some stuff. Let's copy paste this. Uh, do we need to look at this? Nope. Mm, nope, I don't need to. Priceless, don't need to. That's essentially finished right now. Early B2, that's essentially finished. Right, contract. What I can do is I can export that and import it later, but right now. Not really. Right. Four. Server. Of servers. Let mm -hmm. files equals ns dot ls server. Um, files that find just find I think it's CCT it's a contract CCT So you can find a contract. Uh, okay, oh, I just kill this first. All right, uh, Iron Jim has a contract. So I think this is going to where we're going to be ending the stream once you complete the, one of these contracts. All right. So one of the secrets of this game is that there are programming challenges available that you can solve for money or for reputation so here's one algorithmic stock trader one you are attempting to solve a coding contract you have five tries remaining after which the contract will self-destruct we are given the following array of stock prices which are numbers where the ith element represents the stock price on day one determine the maximum possible profit you can earn using at most one transaction that is one transaction is 
one buy and sell. No profit can be made, then the answer should be zero. Note that you have to buy the stock before you can sell it. So this is level one. This is not really that hard. You don't even actually need to program this because just one transaction, you can, you can actually look at this and see where would you buy a stock then sell it. Probably you won't be able to buy a stock at 59 because you will sell it at a loss. Same thing with 104. Buy at 104, sell it at 59. Five, That's classic crypto buy high, sell low. So your maximum possible profit would be this one. Buy at 4, sell at 104. So the maximum profit that you'll have is 0, 100. You can code this. It's easy enough to code this. This one this is essentially a, I don't know, junior programmer basic problem that you can give at an interview but regardless 100 and now we gain 75 million didn't need to wait and we re received the faction invitation as mentioned we'll just join whatever faction we have some factions uh, will prevent you from joining another one so spoiler sector 12 is one of those city of the future so you join the faction within the city of sector 12. now we've got other augs here uh, i think i'll just wrap up the game at least this episode after reading this and uh, um yeah we'll just end the, uh, the game here and what I'll do is I'll continue working for Cybersec. Cybersec requires just 1,000. Uh, no, not 1,000 rep. Wait, what? Requires 18,000 rep uh, and Sector 12 requires 12,000. 18,000 is bigger than. Uh, but cash root starter kit might be more important. So I'll just end the game and uh, do this at night while we're offline. All right, let's read it. Your flux governor, every faction has this. You can buy it from every faction. Augmented targeting one. A cranial implant that is embedded in the inner ear structures and optic nerves. It regulates and enhances balance and hand-eye coordination. Effects plus 10 dexterity skill. Targeting 2, uh, created version, capable of augmenting reality by digitally displaying weaknesses and vital signs of threats. So very very deus sexy. well new deus sexy. Or cyberpunkish. Uh, plus 20 dexterity skill. Similarly, where reflex has more dexterity skill. Synthetic nerve enhancements are injected to all major parts of the somatic nervous system, supercharging the spread of neural signals and increasing reflex speed. Speech processor implant. Cochlear implant with uh, an embedded computer that analyzes incoming speech. The embedded computer processes characteristics of incoming speech such as tone and inflection to pick up on subtle cues and help aid and aid in social interac interactions. Neural stimulator. Cranial implant intelligently simulates certain areas of the brain in order to improve cognitive functions. Plus the hacking and success chance. I think CSEC has neural simulator too, right? No neural trainer. Uh, and finally, Cash Root Starter Kit. A collection of digital assets saved on a small chip. The chip is implanted into your wrist. A small jack in the chip allows you to connect the, it to a computer and upload the assets. Start with 1 million after installing augmentations. Start with Root SSH after installing augmentations. So. When you install an AUG, you lose everything. 
including your money, including your servers. What you retain is your OGS, obviously, and your home computer RAM. The, the servers you purchased, gone. Reputation, uh, gone. Favor is retained, but reputation, gone. Pretty much everything is gone. Even the hacknet is gone. But if you install the cash root starter kit, instead of starting with a thousand dollars, you start with one million. And also, you don't need to research root SSH. So for the next episode, we are going to install this one. Then we're going to start from scratch again. But at the same time, we are also going to be spending money on our RAM. And I guess that's where we're going to end this episode. Oh, uh, instead of hacking contracts, instead of CSEC, we're going to hack it here. And this field work, security work, that's going to need your strength, defense, dexterity, and so on. We are going to discuss that probably in episode four. But for now, uh, we'll leave it at that. Our stuff are still running. Uh, I might just run C grow here. Oh uh, yeah, I might just buy first. Buy 128 RAM and MC Crow. So 175 and C Weekend. Okay, 175. We got 122. Buy that by 175. That's around. Sixty nine. Nice. <laughs> All right, uh, run in JS T nine. Right, that's that. Um, let's just take a look. So, about the whole working offline bit. So, we, in order for it to work, it uh, we we we. Uh, in order for it to work, it's going to take into account this production rate, total online production rate, and it's going to adjust it. To the offline time so what i need to do is i need to let these finish first so that there is something here so mostly the hacking experience and um yeah it's a grow the grow bonus so there's the hacking percent per second so that's good and I think I'll just focus and then I'll save the game. So that's it for episode one of Hacker, uh, Bitburner Let's Play. Next episode, we are going to start installing our first augs and show why automation is important because we are going to start from scratch again. Uh, and keeping only our OGS and our home server. 
and hopefully that should be enough to kickstart our stuff we might have to look for coding contracts to uh what do you call this to supplement our initial money might even do some jobs to supplement our money but other than that well uh we are just going to progress through the game anyway uh thanks for watching and see you in the next episode